Let's take our places and open our hearts and minds to God's Holy Spirit. If you're a guest, we'd like to say welcome. We're glad you joined us today and hope you find peace and joy during worship. Please find the brightly colored paper in the red folder on the hymnal rack and take a moment to complete that form. Please place them in the offering container during that time of service. Also, if anyone has a prayer request or suggestion for visitation, please use the same, use the other portion of that same brightly colored paper and hand them to our ushers during the prayers of the people. Do, you ha do we have any anniversaries this week? I've been, you do, all. Oh. I thought, okay, great. Yes? All right, congratulations. Do we have any birthdays? Jill on Tuesday. All right, God bless and happy birthday. And now we have announcements. Uh, of course, there's a fly up here. The uh, next week is fifth Sunday, make a joyful noise service followed by a welcome back lunch for Paul and Karen. Lunch will be provided. So we don't have to bring anything, right? All right. Sounds good. And we have the Fifth Sunday hymn request. Um, little forms here. Please fill that out. And if you don't, then the organist and pianist will, and the liturgist, okay, just the liturgist will, will pick. The uh, flowers were placed in the sanctuary this morning by Scotty and Mike Baker. Um, our greeting card ministry needs 130 Labor Day cards by August 30th. Um, in the bulletin, we have the uh, school blessing, but uh, one of our participants isn't here yet, so we're going to wait until she gets here. Oh. She just walked in. Great. Okay. School blessing. Yes, indeed. On the back of your large one, Earlier. 
Okay. We have students, parents, teachers up here, and we're going to be right here in the back page. John Wesley lived in a time when education was not available to or even encouraged for all. Yet he believed that education was a universal right based on the scriptural truth that we are all created in the image of God. We all equally deserve to learn and grow in knowledge, wisdom, and grace. He inherited from his mother the view that each child is a talent committed to us under the trust by the great, by the great Lord of fam all families, both of heaven and earth. And so today as we begin a new school year, I know some of you have already started, some of you will be, we take a moment now and recognize and bless our students, parents, and teachers. To the parents, grandparents, and all in this community that help to care for these young people, I remind you of these words from Proverbs. Train children in the way they should go. When they grow old, they won't depart from it. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Their success in the classroom can be aided and even amplified by the love, support, and direction you provide to them. Many times throughout the Bible, God, God tasks parents and caretakers with the responsibility of participating in the education of children and adults that are still, you know, learning. With that responsibility on our hearts and minds, we extend our hands in blessing toward you, and we pray together. O oh God, our eternal and heavenly parent, bless now these families. Fill their homes with joy, their hearts with love. Give them energy, strength, and discernment as they raise these children, and remind them that we, their church family, love and support them. Amen. To the teachers who serve in our schools and at this church, I remind you that teaching is not only a profession, but a calling. It is not simply a skill, but it is potentially, excuse me, it is prominently featured in Paul's listing of spiritual gifts. John Wesley believed that education was a channel for God's grace and that excellent teachers have the ability to transform the lives of their students. We thank you for the commitment you make to your children. We recognize that you do not simply recite information, but you teach our students how to learn, understand, and apply knowledge. With their commitment on our hearts and minds, we extend our hands in blessing toward you and pray together. Holy Spirit, the source of all wisdom, bless now these teachers. Fill their classrooms with learning, their hearts with compassion. Give them focus, patience, and creativity as they educate these children. And remind them that we, their church family, love and support them. Amen. To the students, the students who stand before us today, or sit before us today, I remind you of this promise that the Apostle Paul teaches to in the scriptures. The one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion. Philippians 1, verse 6. This means that while you're growing and learning at home and at school, God is working alongside your parents and teachers to form you into the person God wants you to be. God is equipping you and inviting you to be a part of the great adventure of life. Listen to and respect both your parents and your teachers. At the same time, know that your voice and your point of view matter. The Bible tells us adults not to look down on you because you are young, but to recognize that you can be an, an example to us in speech, behavior, love, and faith. In gratitude for all the, that God will do in you and through you this year, we extend our hands in blessing toward you and pray together. Lord Jesus, who welcomed the children and held up their faith as an example, bless now these students. Fill their schools with community and their hearts with wonder. Develop within them wisdom, integrity, and maturity as they learn and grow this year. And remind them that we, their community and church family, love and support them. Amen. Would all the, the 
Parents and caretakers, stand up for just a moment. Carolyn, you're here somewhere. I saw you come. There you go. Would, would all the uh, teachers stand up with the parents? And any students who aren't standing, would you stand now? All yours. What are we doing? Yeah, you got a backpack, right? Can't wait. Oh, you it says on your backpack and might not quite make it. Of just the kids? Parents, teachers, thank you very much. We want to get a, a picture of the kids, and it's going to be children's uh, sermon time right after this. Look over this way, guys. Thank you. And children's sermon time, shall we? Oh, we, we're supposed to start church, aren't we? Yeah, okay, let's do that. Stay here, though. Okay, don't stay here. It was too complicated. Thank you, babe.
please stand for the call to worship found in your bulletin. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Look at this. The first hymn, hymn of praise, is in the Methodist hymnal number 381. Next hymn of praise is um, uh, "What a Beautiful Name." It's it's one of the handouts. Please be seated. The Children's Church is next. There's so many of y'all today, that's wonderful. Let's try it again, good morning. good morning. Okay, today we're gonna talk about some things that we have learned that are difficult. Has anyone ever learned to do something and it was kind of difficult? Yes, tell me about it. You kept messing up on it and so what did you do? You had to try harder and you just kept on trying. And did you, were you successful at it? Did you figure out how to do it? That's perfect. Anybody else? Has anyone else ever? Oh. Yes. Yes. Tell me about it, Isla. Um, so I learned about dinosaurs. 
You learned about dinosaurs? Yeah. And was it kind of tricky? Yeah. Yeah. And I watched a movie about dinosaurs. Yeah, and so did it give you more information and now are you a dino expert? No. Not yet? <laughs> are you gonna keep are you gonna keep learning until you're a dino expert? No, you're not well, okay, but that's okay. So you wanted to learn about dinos and so you kept trying, didn't you? That's perfect. So we're gonna talk about today about some of the disciples. There were some disciples that were following Jesus and Jesus said, let me tell you what you have to do to follow me. And you know what some of them said? They said, this is too hard. Your teachings are too hard. And you know what happened? Put they quit, my shirt. no, they quit following Jesus. Do you think that was a good choice? No. They quit following Jesus, but some of the other disciples said, you know what, it sounds really hard, but we know that you, shh, it's fine. We know that you are the truth and the life and we are gonna continue to follow you no matter how hard it gets. Because we know that when we follow Jesus, even if it's difficult, in the end, it's gonna be what's best for our lives. And that's how we get to heaven, by following Jesus, even when it gets difficult, okay? Do y'all wanna gather around for a word of prayer? Yes. So many kids, I love it. Let's hold hands. Hey, just everybody scoot back, make the circle a little bigger. Perfect, there we go. Perfect, okay, let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for these precious children that are here today, Lord. Bless us as we start the school year, Lord. When we're at school and when we're going about our day and we face difficult moments, Lord, help us to help us to solve those problems with you in mind. Help us to solve them with kindness and love and grace, just like you handle us with every day. In your precious son's name we pray, amen. amen.
Please stand for the prayer for illumination found in the bulletin in unison. Open, Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. As you remain standing for our first scripture reading this morning, comes to us from the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, verse 56 through 69. Ooh. Hear then these words. If I can get right to it. There we go. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats of me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is too difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of God ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom? Can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Word of God. Be to God. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Our second scripture this morning comes to us from the book of 1 Kings. 8th chapter, verses 22 through 30. Hear then these words, if I get to the right spot. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who, all, who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept with your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him saying, There shall never fail a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your, to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said my name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of all your people of Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place. Heed and forgive. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So this morning, we conclude our uh, summer series, if you will, of Gospel of John, chapter 6. Six sermons.
The hem of response is freely, freely in the Methodist hymnal. Please stand, number 389. remain standing for the affirmation of faith found in the hymnal number 884 from the Korean Methodist Church we believe in the one God creator and citizen of all things father of all nations the source of all goodness and beauty all truth and love we believe in Jesus Christ God manifest in the flesh our teacher example and redeemer the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in forgiveness of sins, and the life, love, and prayer, and grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments, as a sufficient rule of both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord, for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please remain standing for the hymn of dedication, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, number 370 in the Methodist hymnal. I, yeah. I got huh? the number wrong. 301. 301. In the Methodist?